quality of through the throughout the region through the arts. Uh, to do this, we work with hundreds of artists throughout the year who work in a number of mediums and genres. Our community is impacted by these artists uh, through their performances, public art installations, and gallery exhibitions. Our team also has the added benefit of getting to work closer with these artists, which gives us the opportunity to learn more about them and learn more about their art. And we want to share that with you. That is what Seven, Seven with Kevin Live is all about. So why Seven with Kevin? We named this series after a monthly newsletter that I write. In that newsletter, I share seven things. It ranges from things that I'm excited about to things that we are working on, things that I'm interested in, and so on. So we created a list of seven questions that fit that criteria. Basically, it's a little random, a little fun, and hopefully a little thought provoking. If you have ever, if you have never read that newsletter, you can sign up for it at our website, quadcityarts.com. Now, if you're tuning in live and you have a question, go ahead and put that in the comment section. Tuning in live, but don't have a question? Still comment. Let us know where you're watching from or who you're watching with. Tonight, tonight we're gonna uh, tonight we are gonna talk about our exhibit at the airport entitled "A Portrait of Remarkable Women." Now, the 19th Amendment was ratified in August of, of 1920, and this year marks the 100th anniversary of the amendment that gave women the right to vote. It is also worth pointing out that this was not the end of the fight, nor did it provide voting equality. There were a number of barriers in place for both women and specifically African-American women. This was, however, a milestone and another step forward. So in honor of the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment, uh, the show titled A Portrait of Remarkable Women was created for the Quad City Arts Gallery located at the Quad City International Airport. In this exhibit, we feature sculptures by 11 female artists and portraits painted by tonight's guests, Cecile Well and Heidi Hernandez. Now, we are also excited to partner with other locations to display these great artists as well. Not only can you see their work at the airport, you can see them at Bereskin Gallery, the German American Heritage Center, and the River Center Adler Theater Display Case. Now, our first guest is internationally recognized artist, Cecile Well. Cecile splits her time between France and Iowa and is currently working on her Nobel Peace Prize collection, Peace Starts Within. Cecile, welcome to Seven with Kevin Live. Thank you, Kevin. I'm very happy to be on your show tonight. Well, thanks for joining us. Now, I would like to start with a question that I am sure you have answered quite a bit. How did you come to split your time between Iowa and France? Yes, I did answer it quite a bit. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's a long story. Uh, I met uh, my now ex-husband, David Garrison, who is uh, an artist from Burlington, Iowa, in France. And uh, it's a beautiful story that started in France. We married uh, in Normandy and stayed three years there. And then uh, we decided to come uh, to USA. And uh, it's been now 12 years that I am living in uh, Burlington, Iowa with my studio in Fort Madison. I can say that I am a proud Iowan. Excellent, that's fantastic. Well, it's nice that you, you came and you fell in love with, uh, with the great state of Iowa. Yes. So uh, Cecile, uh, tell us a little bit your, about yourself, including when you started painting. Okay, so I started painting when I was probably five or six, meaning it, it really has been in me since a very, very uh, young age. Uh, I had what I like to say a call uh, at age eight. Uh, I really I had a, a special moment where I received for my birthday at my eighth uh, uh, birthday uh, a book, an art book. And uh, mm -hmm. as I was opening that book, uh, there was a Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, some mm -hmm. very, yes, uh, very um, uh, famous painters. And I was just, uh, I just stayed there and I couldn't take my eyes off that book. And then I started to copy what was in the, uh, the, 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 the paintings that were shown in that book. So very early, uh, it was painting, it was also music. Uh, mm. I, I had a call with music and, and even writing. So yes, that's how I started. But uh, then I didn't do a, a, a formal school. Uh, I painted uh, nonstop until I was 
in my uh, 30s, uh, but just for fun, uh, actually, and uh, was a mother very young of uh, three children. Uh, so I raised my children, but I was always painting quite a bit on the side as soon as they were at school. Then I met a, a fantastic uh, master uh, pastelist, and that's when I started to paint in pastel with that master mm -hmm. and uh, did uh, about um, 365 portraits a year with him for three years. So meaning every day I was, I was doing portraits every day, every day. And so a great training with that master. Wow. Uh, so were, were, were these portraits of people that you knew or just, uh, I mean, how, how did you from people, close family and things like that from life to anything I would uh, find interesting books, uh, the photos uh, on the internet, anything. I would just paint, paint, paint. Uh, wow. to, to be good at, at, at painting figures. Excellent. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I, you mentioned that you are also involved with music and, and, and writing as well. Do you still, do you still, do you still work in music and writing? Yes. Uh, um, so I prepared, before being a painter, I was preparing uh, the National Conservatory of Music in Paris. I wanted to be a, a guitarist, classical guitar soloist. Oh, wow. Uh, so I had a formal, a former training, very serious training in classical guitar, which I do still play every day. Uh, so I, I kept some kind of, you know, a level. It's, it's not, of course, what I, but I, so I, I um, uh, got pregnant from my first daughter at age 19. And that's what uh, stopped my ambition to be a, a soloist because it's, for me, it was not compatible with uh, mm. raising uh, some the children. And uh, so I started then to paint. Uh, each time I had a little bit of time, I was painting. And then writing as I've, I've always wrote and I'm preparing a book. So in 2021, I will do a book that will be about the Nobel Prize collection, mm. but with also some some thoughts and, and uh, adding the writing to the just the image of the paintings. Excellent. Well, that's a that's a great segue. So uh, you started your Nobel Peace Prize collection in 2014. Um, was what, what was the catalyst that that prompted the beginning of that? So it's really what started it. I, I started very young to paint those iconic figures. Uh, uh, I was raised in the Middle East. And um, uh, I, ha I have a mother that is a Muslim, uh, although she's not really practicing, you know, she's, she's of origin, uh, she's a Muslim. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and my father was Catholic. And uh, so I lived in countries where I could witness uh, some uh, um, inequality or some rejections and things like that. And so very young, I was aware of things that I thought was not right. And so, and then I, uh, I don't remember, maybe at age 16, I saw this uh, incredible uh, speech of Martin Luther King, uh, the, 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 I had a dream, uh, and it marked me for life. And so I did a few, uh, about maybe 40 years ago, I, I started to paint Martin Luther King. And so I have maybe five or six of his um, uh, portraits. And the first one of the Nobel Peace Prize collection is Martin Luther King. Uh, so he is, all those paintings are four feet by four feet, uh, except this one, because it was the first one. And I did it three feet by three feet, and I thought it was enough. But when I finished uh, the painting, I said, no, I want them even bigger. So it, it's not, I will do one at the end that will be four feet by four feet, because it's about equality, and uh, definitely it's not intentional. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually my favorite, and I, I might keep it, uh, that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a special painting for me. Excellent. Yep. And here is a, an, an image of that yes. um, painting. Yes. Uh, so the dripping on the, 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 the painting, uh, I did that uh, for because uh, the, the, some of the, the characters have given their life uh, for their fight uh, for peace. Uh, and uh, so when there is death, there is the dripping of the, the, uh, the painting, the, the, yes, of the paint uh, uh, to express death, uh, but not in a, you know, too gory way. It's not red. It's just, it's just dramatic. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, you know, and I, I will say, because you, you did talk about the size of these, that um, the ones that, the, that we have at, at the airport currently are four feet by four feet. And I, I have to say that, I, I, w I went out there to see um, to see the show at the airport today, and 
they they are they are large and they are quite stunning um it is they because of the size and just the technique and the quality like they really command a presence there and it is uh, honestly quite stunning uh don our visual arts director was uh telling a story today where somebody um stopped by the airport specifically to see that and you know was moved to tears um just because of how stunning these images are so you. um yes. you've, you've definitely uh you've definitely captured um something there so they are in life size and uh and i have decided that they will all be at the same level so that mm -hmm. when at the end i have a show it's like a gallery of all those people that are equal, that, that are the same size, the same level, and uh, that are all speaking, because it's a narrative uh, kind of painting. There is a narrative mm -hmm. in the background that tells their, their story uh, in a simple, of course, way, because it's so complex. But all of them have something that tells about their fight. And it's a paradox. Uh, but I speak about fight for peace. Uh, you have to be strong uh, to advocate uh, for peace in region where there is trouble. Uh, so all of them have dedicated their lives, uh, have um, uh, fought sometimes uh, giving their, their life uh, for uh, what they were believing in. Yes, yes. Uh, I'd actually like to pull up a, 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 one, of the, one of the paintings that is uh, in uh, which is is displayed at the airport uh nadia murad uh, the 2018 nobel laureate mm -hmm. um and this one uh for for those who may not know nadia murad uh it was for her efforts to end the use of sexual violence as a weapon of war and armed conflict mm -hmm. and uh i if i'm if i remember correctly she i mean qu quite quite young for for a, a nobel laureate yes she's um, one of the youngest and one of the the most recent actually she's mm -hmm. 2000 19, so very recent, uh, had a very dramatic story, happens horrible things. She was uh, abducted by ISIS and uh, all of her family was killed. She was uh, uh, treated as a sexual slave. And uh, so what is remarkable is that some people uh, live the atrocities that we cannot even uh, imagine and they still are so strong and continue to have uh, uh, the, the strong desire of fighting and uh, uh, speaking about justice and uh, willing uh, to ha to make a difference uh, for mm -hmm. a better world. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. and so I do four preliminary studies of each of those portraits. Uh, I do them in uh, charcoal or in pastel. And uh, so I have quite a collection with the, the studies. And uh, at the Bereskin Gallery, uh, uh, I will I will have actually the study of this painting uh, is at the Bereskin Gallery and in pastel. Uh, so it's fun to see the process, you know, of artists when they what they do before they reach uh, the the uh, the final project. Uh, I always like to share that. Excellent. Yeah, that'll be really an, an incredible to see there. Um, so you said that that you do you do four of them leading up to um, yes. the final one. Yes. Um, and and what what does that process look like for you? How long does it take? So to do a painting takes me about a month and a half. Mm. Uh, I have to make some researches uh, about the the person. Uh, I sh choose them randomly. Uh, I don't have an order, uh, so it's like I'm I'm going through uh, all the Nobel Peace Prize and uh, laureates, and then one face is going to talk to me or one story just at that moment. And uh, then w once I have, so I go. Of course, I found the documents on internet. We have so many informations. I wish I could uh, paint from life, you know, some, but I'd, uh, I'd, I'm not fortunate to be uh, to approach all those people uh, directly. So I, mm -hmm. I have to go. And I take photos that are free of rights on internet. And I often uh, combine uh, a head with a different body. Or uh, So it's not just one photo that I take and I copy it. Uh, it's a complex. And then there is always a scene behind uh, that tells the story. And uh, so it's a step-by-step -step, uh, uh, effort. Uh, I do all, always like one or two uh, studies in uh, charcoal and then one or two in pastel uh, to get as close as I can to the final project. And then I do the oil. Wow. Uh, wow. I do everything myself. So I stretch uh, the canvas. Uh, I. Uh, put some high glue. Uh, I do uh, the two coats of gesso. I like the really the masters of the 16th century or something. I do very traditionally uh, everything uh, on great linen uh, canvas. Uh, so I mean, those paintings will last for 
a very long time. <laughs> so, uh, how many have have you painted uh, in this series uh, as or to date? Yes, so I've uh, achieved 20 of them. I signed uh, about a month ago the 20th of uh, the Nobel Prize. And there is so far, uh, I mean, uh, until I reach the end, uh, it's uh, 117, I think, uh, altogether. But every year there is some new ones. So uh, I, I give myself about 15 years uh, to do that. Uh, so kind of a lifetime project because I have other things going on. Uh, I don't do just one thing, but uh, a few things. Uh, so, yes. Uh, that was that was my exact ne next question. So while you're doing this, so obviously, uh, what, what, what else have, have you been working on in, in, in the interim, you know, while you're working on these? So um, one thing that I started in my very beautiful, very large studio in Fort Madison, uh, I started first by what I call my uh, God's Feet project. Uh, mm. And it's murals that are 10 feet by 40 feet, very large murals uh, that wow. have uh, some uh, um, uh, story. Uh, and it's, my, it's, it's more mystical. It's more uh, a spiritual path that I have uh, uh, been uh, walking uh, for many years and uh, that led me to start uh, those paintings uh, and it takes me about two months to do one and uh, so if I if I combine everything it's at, I'm a hundred percent in my studio I mean that's all I'm doing is, is painting all the time uh, beside that I fell in love many years ago with the Mississippi River I'm a I'm at the Mississippi River every day. I uh, walk, meditate, and, and I have a bond with the river that uh, I joke sometimes, I said, uh, I am the river. Uh, so that's how deep I feel about being at the bank of the river. And then uh, by doing this, I started to pick up some wood uh, and uh, couldn't resist to bring back some beautiful driftwood uh, that uh, is right there on the, the riverfront in Fort Madison and started to do sculpture. So I do driftwood sculptures. And uh, so it's, it's like uh, in my studio, there is so man, many uh, pieces of work. I mean, all kinds of works uh, that, uh, that uh, I mean, I have, uh, I'm glad I have a, a large space. Wow. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm starting to just try to make a list of things that you're not working on in the arts right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have to come to my studio. I'll, I'll be, I'm always uh, very happy to receive um, uh, customers or friends in my studio and uh, see because there is not that many incre uh, incredible spaces and, 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 and unusual spaces. Uh, and so I think it's, it's, it's worth the visit. Uh, Cecile, I will take you up on that. So, okay, great. Yeah, I yes. would love to. I'll be very happy to receive you. And uh, so, and then one last thing uh, that uh, I do is portrait commissions. Uh, I'm very happy to receive portrait commissions. And uh, uh, so I do pastel. That was my original uh, medium that uh, I mastered. Uh, I, I received many awards uh, in in uh, major shows uh, in uh, New York City at the Pastel Society of America, avec uh, la Société des Pastels de, Fran de France. Uh, so I, I'm I'm actually known uh, in the pastel world, and uh, yes, and so this is the kind of work uh, that I can do in pastel, meaning very fine, very realistic uh, work, uh, and uh, so I have often uh, portrait commissions. Excellent. Is this, uh, I mean, is it, what, do, you, do you know the, the story behind, or what, what, what's the story behind uh, this particular uh, so one? This portrait uh, is actually a little a young uh, teenager that posed for a group of artists uh, at the Scottsdale Artist School. Uh, mm -hmm. I went there, uh, I wanted to uh, meet some interesting artists, and, uh, so, and they have always fantastic settings. So we were maybe six or seven artists uh, wow. seeing uh, this model. And uh, we were allowed on top of that to take uh, photos. So uh, she was so beautiful that I take multiple photos and I could do a series. And on this painting, I won an award at the Pastel Society of America in New York uh, about six years ago or something like that. Wow, yeah, it's, it's quite stunning. Um, Thank you. Well, Excellent. Uh, Cecile, uh, is, is there anything else you, you, you'd like to add before we, uh, before we move on to... Yes, uh, definitely. I just want to uh, uh, 
say a big thank you uh, to uh, Pat Bereskin and Don uh, Wofford Metallo for putting together this this uh, quite uh, beautiful show uh, that is actually an event in the Quad Cities. Uh, uh, to thank you also, Kevin. Oh. <laughs> I mean, uh, um, it's it's nice to have the spotlights. You know, artists. We are staying in our studio. We're believing in what we're doing. We're painting, and but uh, to have sometimes uh, a little bit the spotlights uh, is is very good. It it it, it keeps our drive. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it boosts uh, our drive. In fact. Well, that's great to hear. Um, and, and I will say, uh, honestly, I'd. I, uh, I will pass those accolades to Dawn and Pat. They have done an incredible job on putting together all of this. Uh, I, I will also like to point out that tomorrow night uh, at the Bereskin Gallery um, is is the, is the official opening there. And I believe you will you will be present. Absolutely, yes. Uh, so it's from five thirty to seven thirty. Uh, I will be present, and Heidi too. And uh, I think that uh, it's going to be a, an amazing opening. I look forward uh, to meet uh, uh, the people that will come and uh, to share uh, my joy of being there. Excellent. Well, we're we're very excited. I'm I'm sure tomorrow will be a, a great success over at the Breskin Gallery. Uh, so, Cecile, before you go, I have one more set of questions, a yes. little silly, all the way to th hopefully thought-provoking. Uh, so, Cecile, are you ready for Seven with Kevin? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right. So, what are you currently watching on Netflix or TV? Well, I'm, I'll ask, ask you a, a straight answer. I don't have TV. Uh, so, I don't... <laughs> I don't watch TV, uh, so I actually, to tell you the truth, uh, I have a computer where sometimes through Amazon, I look a movie uh, or two, yes. Perfect, you know, I was gonna ask if you were watching something, uh, when were you watching it? I mean, you seem to be working on, on art quite when a bit, so. And I cannot do anything else, then I eventually to relax and, and uh, take my mind off anything, I will watch e either a, a, an interesting or a silly movie. Perfect. Uh, so my next question, Star Wars or Star Trek? Uh, so Star Trek. <laughs> because it, uh, I mean, it, it takes me back to, to a, a time where I just loved, I wouldn't miss mm. one Star Trek. I think it was very creative. Uh, I mean, the figures were always, you know, goofy, funny. The, the aliens were always, and then loved the figures, uh, the, the main figures. So Star Trek, yes. Excellent. Uh, where is the best pizza in the Quad Cities or where you're from? I cannot tell you in the Quad Cities, but in Burlington, Iowa, uh, it's the Parkside uh, Brewery and they have a delicious pizza that is made with a crust that is uh, beer battered, I think, <laughs> beer battered crust. Uh, so uh, very good. Perfect. I am uh, adding that one to my list to visit. So. Very good, yes. <laughs> um, what is your favorite book? So it's difficult to say one favorite book, uh, but I'll, I'll tell you about three of them. Uh, so one, and I know them in France, uh, French, so I have to look at my little note, but uh, it's translated in English. It's uh, Thus Spoke Zarathustra from uh, Friedrich uh, Nietzsche. Uh, a wonderful, very interesting, deep uh, uh, book uh, about, it's like a ph philosophical uh, poem. And uh, it's, it's, it's almost, uh, uh, the story of almost a prophet. And I like uh, very much the idea of uh, um, a retreat for, for example, 10 years in uh, somewhere, and then you come back transformed. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a similar story like that. Uh, so it's a philosophical uh, story. And then uh, the other one is The Little Prince uh, of uh, Saint-Exupéry. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's also somehow philosophical. So it's in a very simple approach that everybody can understand. It's, it it, it, um, uh, uh, it asks deep uh, questions about ex existence. Uh, so uh, this is very interesting. And then another one, the third one that marked me is um, so in um, it's a crime and punishment of Dostoevsky. Uh, so it's a it's a Russian uh, writer, and that's the opposite. It's 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 um, uh, real life uh, in all what it means. Uh, so uh, the, the toughness uh, and then the, uh, the the complexity of life. Excellent. Uh, next question, uh, where is your go-to place for inspiration? So uh, my straight answer is the Mississippi River uh, uh, right here. 
but anywhere where nature is is uh, and it can be very simple i, I can be just moved uh, uh walking somewhere and finding a little something that will stop me and i can stop and go within uh, very easily uh in multiple places i i find beauty uh, everywhere so people say well the, uh, uh, ha 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 iowa but i said you know and you you lived in paris 25 years i said but everywhere we can find beauty we can mm -hmm. find peace uh, and uh, that's why uh, the show at the uh, the Bereskin Gallery is called uh, Nobel Peace Prize uh, Collection. Peace starts within. This is my deep belief. Uh, and so uh, I always look for this uh, within uh, peace. Excellent. Uh, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? I, uh, I can't answer that question because I wouldn't attempt anything else. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't. I, I, I just, I'm happy the way I am and I've always uh, wanted since I'm very young and I cannot imagine doing something else. So it's it's very hard uh, to answer uh, the question. So none. That's a that's a great answer. I mean, it, well, as you mentioned, peace starts within, I think, being, you know, at I, peace uh, and that's... Yes. That's perfect. Um, now, if you could have a drink with any artist, living or dead, who would that be? Okay, so I have also <laughs> <laughs> to to give only one. Uh, but uh, so, if uh, it was from the past, it would be first uh, Leonardo da Vinci, mm -hmm. because uh, he represents uh, the you know the uh, a fantastic being that was an inventor, a creator, a physician. Uh, uh, he, 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 was, uh, he was incredible in his creativity in all fi uh, very different fields. Uh, so, uh, and then I would say also um, uh, if uh, it was uh, painters uh, that were alive, I would say Anselm Kiefer, mm -hmm. uh, a German uh, contemporary painter, extraordinary man, uh, and I really admire uh, his work, uh, Ger uh, Ger Gerard Richter, also German, uh, a contemporary painter. Picasso, for sure, uh, admired the strength of his creativity. Uh, uh, so uh, here's four of them. Mm, perfect. Well, that's it. Cecile, thank you so much. This has been an absolute delight. So. Thank you, Kevin. It's It's been a delight for me, too. Well, excellent. Uh, thank you, Cecile. Uh, you can learn more about Cecile online uh, at these sites here. Her website, CeceleWell.com, Facebook at CeceleWell.1, and on her Instagram at Cecile underscore Well. So thank you again, Cecile. Uh, now you can see her work in person at the Quad City International Airport, Breskin Gallery, the German American Heritage Center, and the River Center Adler Theater display case. Next, I am excited to talk with Heidi Hernandez, uh, whose work is currently on display, uh, whose work currently on display is a collection of local and national female artists that she admires. Through the process of painting and dialoguing with her subjects, she explored the term of feminism and what it means to, to contemporary artists. So Heidi, welcome to Seven with Kevin Live. Hello, how are you? Doing well. Thanks for joining us tonight, Heidi. Nice. You're welcome. My pleasure. Excellent. So let's start off with uh, an easy one. Uh, Heidi, tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. Well, I'm a mom. I'm a wife. I'm a teacher at both St. Ambrose and the Creative Arts Academy in the Quad Cities. I collect things. I'm a student. I learn things all the time. I'm a painter. I've lived in the area for the majority of my life. But as a child, I grew up uh, in New Jersey and then I started school. I went to kindergarten and first grade in Panama in Central America. So I've got a couple of questions on all of that. So how, so born in New Jersey, went to, started school in Panama. How, how did that transpire? Uh, my, my dad works for the government. So we ah. moved around a little bit and then we moved back home and we've been here since forever, so. Excellent. And you said you were a collector. So of what exactly? Uh, anything mid-century modern, comic books, toys, uh, you name it. Just any oddball thing that I can find, I, I try to I gravitate towards. 
Uh, and any comic books uh, specifically? Is there a, a preference that you have? I really like EC comics. So they're like old horror comics from like the 50s. They were banned. I mean, they, they put the comic code on comic books because of EC comics. Oh, wow. Yeah. I did not know that. Well, good. Um, I, well, we'll, we'll get back to painting, I guess. <laughs> uh, but so uh, what uh, was there a point? Uh, it, was there a point in your life where you knew that, that you wanted to, to be an artist? I kind of feel like as kids, we, uh, you know, we just assume we can be anything, right? So I think just when I see my elementary kids and they're like, I'm an artist, I'm a musician, I'm a scientist, I guess I really never mm -hmm. let go of that. And so I guess just as far back as I can remember, you know, like that inner child is still very much alive, as you can tell through my collections of oddities. But uh, yeah, I'm just as curious as I was as a as a child and I'm, I'm always as well learn and experiment and you know keep that sense well, that's of wonderful alive. I mean, yeah well I, that means that you that's a it's great to have someone like you uh teaching children today to help them keep that that wonderment alive so that's great um now do, do you work in, in any other mediums besides painting uh, I, I i dabble here and there I, I like collage i do mixed media sometimes sometimes mm -hmm. i'll do embroidery or clay or stained glass I've tried, printmaking. I think painting can translate well into other media. So I like to just play around and learn new things. Excellent. Would you say is, is, is painting your, your primary go-to? Yeah. Excellent. Um, so the exhibit that you currently have on display with us at, uh, at the Quad City International Airport uh, is a collection of women artists who you admire. Um, what was the, the catalyst to start that project? The catalyst was um, in part the show at the Putnam. I knew that was coming and I wanted to celebrate, you know, 100 years of women's right to vote. And I also wanted to know more about the people in my lives and their female experience, their perspective. So I wanted to celebrate their strengths and overcome that they overcome adversity and the power we hold as women. I wanted to pay homage to them and have these conversations to listen and learn from them and connect with them. Excellent. So, uh, through through your your paintings, um, you know, you also you mentioned that you had you dialogued with them, you talked with them. Um, can you can you talk me through that process? I started with basic questions about their experiences as a woman, maybe if they'd faced any hurdles or what they thought of the word feminism, because some people mm. think that's you know like a naughty word, and uh, just talked. We just let the conversation go from there. So. Excellent. And were, were you painting them at the time or was that would that come after the interview? Um, it was a little bit of both. Like some of the people I painted would give me the interview later and some mm -hmm. of them so I had already started and then I got the interview. And so it just depended. Excellent. Uh, and here are some some great shots uh, from your uh, exhibit at the airport. Uh, it's uh, like I mentioned to Cecile, uh, being out there today and being able to to really interact with these has been uh, was uh, honestly it was the the highlight of my day uh, being able to go out and really see these. The the other benefit for me is that uh, I, I know some of these artists, um, and so being able to see them, uh, you know, there's there's definitely a few that I, you know, that you you really captured. Um, and I will say I, I will give a quick shout out. The the one you did of Lisa uh, is the one that really comes to mind for me. I, I saw her and I was like, oh my gosh, like you you captured that that essence that is is Lisa right there. So I I just I I really appreciated that one. So, um, but we we've got a couple here that that we want to talk about a little bit. Um, first, uh, I'd like to talk about the the one that you've titled a uh, mask a uh, mask avenger. Um, so we can uh, bring that one up here. Uh, and so t t tell me a, a little bit about that image. Well, it wasn't until I was in college that I learned about the wonderful Gorilla Girls. And the Gorilla Girls got me thinking about like what it means to be a female. And I was just mesmerized by their campaign and mm -hmm. they're willing to fight combat and combat, combat injustice through humor. They're really funny and their ads, if you've ever seen them, just make you laugh, but they're serious. So you're driven to action through humor, which I think is a really great approach. Um, personally, I really never thought about sexism when it came to exhibiting work or making work because I never really experienced discrimination as an artist. 
But just because I never experienced doesn't mean that it's a problem, right? Yeah. So uh, I'm just one person and a person who is rejected based on their race or their sex or their sexual orientation is one too many in my book. So we need to acknowledge the past, you know, the history book, mm -hmm. books that tell us less than half the story, right? And yeah. you don't see very many women or people of color. So I think it's important to look back in order to look forward so that we yeah. can determine what, like what went wrong, you know, like, who made those decisions to put these systems in, you know, place and how we can kind of fight that and stop what's going on, you know? Yeah, and, and people have, have been using art to to convey that message and, and kind of tell that story for, I mean, I think centuries. So, excellent. Uh, I'd like to bring up a, a one that I is is near and dear to all of us at, at Quad City Arts. Here is a uh, Don Wolford Metallo's uh, um, image that 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 you painted of of Don. This was a lot of fun for me because uh, I was experimenting with painting on wood. I had done it with oil before, but I I really loved the way the wood grain was showing through. So I decided to uh, just use stain. Why not? So these are graphite and stain on wood yeah. panels. And it was, it was a lot of fun. It was fun experimenting. But Dawn as a person is, had a huge impact on my artistic career. After college, I did an internship at Quad City Arts and was able to learn a lot from her and just through working in the, the gallery, you know, hanging shows and curating shows and meeting artists and talking to people. But um, Dawn herself, she's really, you know, inspirational. She's always experimenting. She's willingness to share her techniques with us too, which I think is really great. So if I ask her a question, she's always willing to share. She's not, you know, an artist who's like, oh, you know, keeping secrets. Um, she came to our school last year and we made paper with the kids and the kids just absolutely adored her and had a lot of fun making paper. So I appreciate all she does for the community and her willingness to give back, so. Excellent, I, I don't think I could have, could have said that better. So um, yeah, excellent. Um, I, and then w w one other one we want to highlight here is is Vanessa. So um, can you tell me a, a, a little bit about, about sure, the process sure. of this one, a little so, bit about Vanessa? Did you get to see the show at the Figgy, the Vanessa German show? I did not, unfortunately. Oh. Okay, so if you have not seen her work, please look her up. She's outstanding. Um, she is a powerhouse. Her words and actions show strength and speak truth. Um, she put around these signs around her community that say, don't shoot me, we love you. Um, she is from a community in Pittsburgh that has high crime rates. Mm -hmm. And she started making art on her porch and the kids came in and were really interested and she ended up opening an art house. And the kids at the Creative Arts Academy, thanks to the people at the Figgy and the wonderful teacher I work with, um, we were able to collaborate and the kids were able to create an exhibit that coincided with hers. So they recreated her love front porch in mosaic tiles, and they created places in our community that they thought were special. So there's a front porch and you could leave little um, tidbits of writing on these trees and tie them on because her power figures are like wrapped and protected. Um, it was a wonderful experience. The kids were able to tell her about their exhibit, and then she was able to tell them about her exhibit. So it was just a wonderful, wonderful experience. And she was wow. just like, just wonderful. She's so powerful and outspoken and warm and it, she's just a great person, so. Wow, yeah, that's that's a, that's an, an incredible experience, an incredible moment. And you definitely, within this image, I think you've really captured that, that power. I mean, like, especially in those eyes, like it's, uh, it's really, really incredible. Um, so as you, you, you mentioned earlier, uh, the exhibit explores the term feminism. So I was curious, uh, did this teach you anything new about feminism? Did it change your views of feminism from when you started to, to now? Uh, interviewing people about their unique female experiences was a really educational. I learned that there is still a lot wrong with how people treat each other based on their sex and sexual, identi sexual identity. Mm -hmm. I also learned that there continues to be a, a strange need for people to be a protector versus being protected. So there's this weird like shell people put on, but I feel like, isn't it important to be
be able to be both, right? We should be able to protect people, but we should also be able to be protected and be good with that. So there was a lot of this when I was interviewing. I, I, I felt that was strong. I also um, heard from a large majority of the women I interviewed that speaking up and having a strong point of view was considered by their male counterparts a negative trait. And we recently saw this on the steps of the Capitol building, right, with Ted Yoho and AOC. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a problem, right? He's elected to speak for us. And it's just, <laughs> the right now are just like, huh, unfortunate. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think that's a, a good way to put that, unfortunate. <laughs> so a um, lot of that came out in the interviews, you know, like, hmm. That was interesting to me. About 80% of the people, when I asked, it said had a story of similar situations. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, and and you know, to be honest, it, it's it's not a big surprise. I mean, you know, w you know, just being in any sort of business, those are the things that 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 you hear is that there is a very different. There's a different approach for when a a, a man is assertive versus when when a woman is. So that's uh, un unfortunate, to be honest. So. Well, very interesting. So did it, I mean, so you said, I mean, it sounds like it, it kind of opened your eyes to some, some new experiences. Um, you know, has it, you know, has, has it, it, it changed in some way? Is there, are you, um, you I know, is, is there, fight harder, man. That's what, <laughs> that's what I was getting to. It's, that, yeah. <laughs> it's like, we have to be like boisterous and especially mm -hmm. with this vote coming up, like, come on, get out there and vote ladies. Mm -hmm. oh. Gotta make change. Let's do it. Excellent. Well, Heidi, uh, oh, there's a couple. Uh, so I, I did want to want to touch real quickly. Um, work outside of your current exhibit. Um, obviously, you know, earlier you mentioned that you know you do a lot of uh, mixed media and and some other things. So um, is is there anything that you're currently working on outside of this exhibit, or you know that you? Uh, that, yeah. I have some paintings on exhibit right now. There's a St. Ambrose faculty show. That's amazing. The professors out there are wonderful artists. Please go see it. But um, I painted some portraits of uh, the Black Panther Party hmm. back in 2011. And I thought that those need to come back out because, you know, the climax and what's going on in the news. It's just like, it's a shame. But I'm bringing them back out because, unfortunately, the times call for it. Hmm. I feel like we need to be allies. We need to be active anti-racists. We need to, as a society, looking out for the collective instead of ourselves. You know, we need to look at our community. We need to realize that we is more important than me, right? Didn't That's Mahalo right. say that? Uh, so Heidi, uh, the the exhibit at St. Ambrose. Um, do you mm -hmm. by chance know how know how long it is it is going on or how long it's up? I think it's up for another month. Perfect. Exactly. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> nope. Uh, that was mostly a note for me, so I can go check it out. So, All right. <laughs> excellent. Well, um, Heidi, is there anything else that, that that you would like to add? Uh, anything else you'd like to put out there this evening? I just, I hope that people, it's it just the climate right now in politics, and I don't want to make this political, but I just hope that people will look out for one another, love one another, show kindness and empathy and stand up for what is right and lift people up when they're down. Cause I feel like a lot of people are down right now and man, we need to help lift them up. We need to make things level. We need to make things, you know, equal and treat people with respect. I feel like there's a lot of like negativity, ne negativity in the air right now. So I also wanna thank you for having me and I thank Dawn and Pat for all the work they've done. And I'm so happy to be part of the show. And Cecile's work is amazing. So I really am thrilled to be showing with her and all the other women, women artists, the sculptures are excellent. So please go see the show. And um, my proceeds are going to some, some, uh, I will give my proceeds to some different causes. So if you are interested in buying any artwork, I'm giving to the National Organization for Women and also to the Women for Women International. So I'm hoping to raise money to give back Excellent. That's great. Um, I, and I'll, I'll kind of piggyback on a couple of things that you said. Uh, 
I would definitely encourage people to go see the exhibit at the Quad City International Airport. Um, there is there 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 is a, a lot of hope in in that show. I mean, there's a lot of peace in that show. Being able to to look at it and take it in, it is uh, you know for for uh, for for the the size of the gallery. And I mean, it, it's not very large, but it is uh, this is a very impactful show in that small space. So. Uh, you and Cecile and the uh, 12 sculptors that are involved um, have, have really, uh, really done a great job. Uh, but Heidi, before you go, I have one more set of questions for you. Are you ready for seven with Kevin? I am. Bring it on. Excellent. All right. So Heidi, what are you currently watching on Netflix or TV? Okay. Documentary 13th. It's great. Watch it, please. And Umbrella Academy. Oh, I just, my, my wife and I just finished the Umbrella Academy. Uh, at least the second season. So uh, I'm right there with you. Uh, great show. So uh, Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars for sure. All right. Uh, where's the best pizza in the Quad Cities? I have a tie. It's either Harris Pizza or Pizza and Subs. If you're feeling like a calzone. Mm -hmm. Good choices. Uh, what's your favorite book? Uh, the book that made me fall in love with reading was Catcher in the Rye. Excellent. Uh, where's your go-to place for inspiration? Flea markets and school. Kids have the best ideas. Listen to them, please. Excellent. Uh, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? I think it would be really interesting to try industrial design. Ooh, very nice. Uh, and if you could have a drink with any artist, living or dead, who would it be? Henry Darger. All right. Good answer. All right. Uh, Heidi, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for uh, coming on here and talking with us and uh, sharing everything that you've uh, learned and uh, grown with, with this uh, with this exhibit. It's been it's been great talking with you. Thank you. Thanks uh, for having me. Happy. Thank you. All right. Uh, you can find Heidi Hernandez's work at her website, HeidiHernandezArt.com, and on her Instagram at X, Heidi Hernandez X. So thank you all to all of you who have tuned in live. Uh, and to all of you who are watching us later, thank you so much for checking us out. Now, don't forget, you can see Cecile and Heidi's work at our gallery at the Quad City International Airport through October. Now, uh, again, we'll remind you how to stay in touch with Cecile and Heidi. You can visit them both online at their websites and also their social media. Uh, there is a lot of programming in the Quad Cities around the 19th Amendment. Uh, the best place to learn about what it took to ratify the 19th Amendment and what it did and did not accomplish is at the Putnam Museum with their exhibit, Liberated Voices. The Figgy has an exhibit called Seen and Heard, The Art of Empowerment up through, a, uh, up through May of next year. The Bereskin Gallery has more of Cecile's work and Heidi's pieces uh, with an open house happening tomorrow night, 5.30 to 7.30. You can also see more of Heidi and Cecile's work at the German American Heritage Center and the Adler Theater. Uh, I would like to give a special thank you to Pat Bereskin and Don Wolford Metallo for coordinating the exhibitions at our respective galleries and for working other working with others in our community to showcase these great artists. Uh, as always, this is a team effort. So thank you to everyone at Quad City Arts. Uh, and don't forget, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our YouTube page, uh, and visit our website to learn more. And thank you again for tuning in and watching tonight.